In these problems, we're working on reducing fractions before we multiply them. And this is a big work saver. Whenever you can reduce a fraction before you multiply it, it's going to be a lot less work. I mean, we could multiply 3 times 4 and have 12, and then 4 times 5 and have 12 over 20, and then we have to re reduce it down from there. But when two fractions are multiplied with each other, you can cancel. If there's something the same on the top as on the bottom, like we have a 4 up here and a 4 up here, boom, boom, they cancel. Now what you're left with is a 3 on top and a 5 on the bottom, and we just write that as 3 fifths. So we didn't really have to do any multiplying in that one at all to get the right answer. All we had to do was cancel. So that's the advantage of reducing before multiplying. Let's try a couple others. This next one we have a division problem. And remember, when you divide fractions, what you do is you change it into a multiplication problem by taking the reciprocal of the second one, uh, which means you turn the fraction upside down. What's on the bottom goes on the top. What's on the top goes on the bottom. So instead of 7 halves here, we get 2 sevenths. And now, you probably have jumped ahead and seen this already, I've got a 7 on top and a 7 on the bottom, boom, they cancel. I have a 2 on the top, a 5 on the bottom, my answer is 2 fifths. All right, let's try one more. Now this looks a little bit harder, we've got mixed numbers here. So you want to uh, turn them into improper fractions first. Remember we do that by taking the integer part, multiplying it by the denominator, adding it to the top, and putting it over the original denominator. So this would be 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10 thirds. And this one would be 1 times 5 is 5 plus 4 is 9 uh, fifths. Now, it might seem to you that we don't have anything we can cancel, but we do. I'm going to write the 10 in a prime factorization. 10 is 2 times 5. So this is 2 times 5. And then I'm going to write the 9 here as 3 times 3, now we have things we can cancel. I've got a 5 on top and a 5 on the bottom. Those are gone. I've got a 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom. Those are gone. And what I've got left is just a 2 on the top and a 3 on the top and nothing on the bottom. So I take the 2, I multiply it times the 3, and I get 6. And that is my answer. This looked like probably a pretty hard problem to do when you started out, but in this method, with uh, factoring out our numbers and canceling out to reduce the fractions, it comes out to be a simple, very simple multiplication problem. So that's a little bit of work with reducing fractions before multiplying. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.